All right. Welcome, everyone. This is an exciting day. Lead scoring and grading. So much fun. I'm excited to be here. This is one of my favorite topics because in Pardot, you can absolutely nail lead scoring and grading. This is CSI number seven in our, our maturity model for Pardot marketing automation. We've got people from as far as Vancouver. I don't say as far. You may be local. Vancouver, hey, shout out. Mount Washington, New Hampshire. That's what I'm talking about. Fellow New Hampshire writes, what do we call ourselves? I don't know. Um, London, Boston, Portugal. Shout out to Portugal. I have visited the Azores and they were awesome. Um, so people from all over Maryland, right on. Um, and we're going to nail this topic. So let's get into it. For those listening to the recording, if it sounds like I'm randomly saying random things, it's because we've got a chat. And for those who joined us just now, um, find that chat, say hi if you haven't already. And one quick thing for you to change is change it so that it's not just saying hi to panelists, but hi to everyone. So you change it so it's panelists and attendees. That way, if I get boring, you can talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> but hopefully we'll keep that from happening. All right, today's plan. We're gonna examine the question, essentially the goal of grading and scoring. Why are we here? We're gonna address that. When you have the goal figured out, you can totally make steps to get there. So we're gonna talk about that. Then we're gonna get into scoring strategies and tech. We're talking about going solo. What happens when you just use scoring by itself? Yes, problems come out of the woodwork like crazy. Hey, Irving, California. Good to see you, Carla. Um, we're also going to talk about combining grading and scoring. This is a sweet spot. So if you're wondering the best way to make it all happen, it happens when you combine grading and scoring. Because you know what? The theme, if you haven't already noticed, hey, what's a webinar without a theme, people? Come on. Is best friends. And lead scoring and grading are best friends, just like cookies and milk, Oreos and milk. And what, are, what other best friends? You throw your best friends in the chat. What are the amazing combinations that can happen Maybe you're hungry and you have food combinations, or maybe it's tech combinations. I mean, I've seen some people are saying Salesforce and Pardot. That's awesome. Some things are just better together, and grading and scoring is that. So we're going to talk about that, and then also talk about grading scores, grading strategies themselves, and the tech to make it happen. Pardot makes this happen. Otherwise, you got to hack your tool to make it magic, but you can potentially do that too. And we'll talk about the future. There's things like progressive or predictive scoring. And sometimes it offers more, or it says it offers more than you think, you think it does. So we will talk about that. So, oh, Maverick and Goose, peanut butter and jelly, milk and cookies. And with that, let's do it. Let me introduce you to another great combination. Casey, that's me. Hi. And my wife, Tina. Um, both marketers, both love lobster. Besties, there's some numbers in the in the left hand or right hand side here that she introduced you to me by, uh, but some of those numbers are the same. 12, 12 is roughly the number of years I've been working with Pardot. I forget 13, 12. You know, when you get old, you forget how many years. So a long time. But I was realizing today that's roughly the exact same amount of time that I've been married uh, to my wife Tina. So married to Pardot, married to Tina. She's had, she's had to hurt, hear about it quite a few times. I don't know if anyone can relate to that. But yeah, we've, we've been doing that a long time. And 3,200, number of Pardot implementations that Cheshire Impact has completed and rising and rising. So I rounded to the nearest 100 on that one. But lots of experience to bring that up. It's not so much to brag. It's just to share. We've seen people do scoring the right way. We've seen them do it the wrong way. Um, we've tried all sorts of different kinds of strategies. And if we can help you skip some of those testing ways and get right to the best practices, you can save yourself years of time and, and trial and error. So that's what we're here for today. Has anyone played The Sims? You remember this? It's kind of an old school game, but there, it's, it's still there. It's still out there now. And this kind of dates you too, I guess, if, you, if you've ever played this. If you have, be, be proud in the chat. Let me know I'm not alone. <laughs> um, yeah, 3,200 is impressive for sure. Um, and yes, she is cute. So The Sims is one of those games where uh, you kind of simulate um, you know, people in real life. And, and one of the reasons, and again, it's just another one of those themed points around, well, um, better together, right? So one of the things that happens in Sims is that when you go to meet someone, it's kind of a kind of a cool interface. Like you meet someone and you want to say hi. Well, you don't just walk up to someone. There's options. You can like joke. You can tickle them. You can um, wrestle. 
you can just talk, right? Now, imagine it's and it's realistic too. So if you just walk up to a stranger and you're like, let's tickle them. They're like, whoa, stranger, stranger danger. Don't randomly tickle me. And they're like, automatically, they're like, I don't like you. And their, their opinion of you goes down. But if you try something different, like you start, try talking first and then you just flirting is an option. There's all these different options. If you do the right order of them, then it all goes much better. It's not guaranteed to work, but it goes way better. So on the same token of the Sims having an order to the chaos, marketing automation does too. And so um, some of you already know about this. Who knows about the CSI? Has anyone taken the CSI? If you have, throw your score down there if you want, or just say that you've taken it or you know about it uh, in the chat. So you encourage other people to get their score too. The CSI, the success index is, it's a roadmap for marketing automation. So there's 10 steps to it. And the idea is you do them in order. You do them in order. If you do them in order, it saves you a ton of time. And you won't get to a step and you're like, wow, where's the data? I don't have the data. It's because you did these steps in order. So we have an assessment attached to the roadmap where you can hop on a, a call with us and do a CSI and we'll help you figure out what your score is. And it's between zero and 10. It's really cool. So if you're interested in that, you can, you can just type in CSI in the chat and we'll follow up with you and we'll get you scheduled to have an assessment. It takes like 25 minutes. But you, what you get from it is you know where you're at. You get a number between zero and 10. You know what your next step is. You also know what your what a 10 looks like. And that kind of helps because a lot of us have that feeling that we're not using Pardot totally, um, but maybe we are. Um, and so this kind of helps clear that up. But the reason I bring this up is because one of those elements in the CSI is called two-dimensional lead rating. And that's what we're talking about here today. In fact, we have webinars on every single one of the, the steps in the roadmap. So if you're like going through the assessment with our team and up, we're not really doing this particular one, but we'd love to do more of it. We have webinars and content and blogs and all sorts of things to help support you. And obviously our team as well to support you with those things. So each one has a question when we go through the assessment. And the question is really leads to the answer. This is what you're trying to go for. You want to be able to answer yes to this. And let's go ahead and uh, trigger a little poll action because we're going to be able to answer this ourselves uh, for everyone here. Um, so what we do is we go through and we'd ask, do you separately rate your leads for their activity and their quality? And this is essentially a smart way of saying, do you use lead scoring and grading? Now, the way the CSI works is if you're totally using scoring and grading, you say yes on the poll or you say yes to the CSI, right? If you're not using either of them, you'd say no. If you're using one, but you could do a better job of it, or maybe you're using scoring, but not grading, you want to give yourself like partial credit, you put kind of, <laughs> kind of, sort of, it's the partial credit answer and you get 0.5. So you get one point for every correct answer. That's how you get to 10. You get 0.5 if you say kind of. And when you do this, that helps you understand what your number is. So let's just go ahead and let's end the poll here and just see what everyone's results are. Okay. So we've got some people that are like, yes, very cool. We're going to have some power tips for you or maybe ways to clean that up or make sure that we're doing it the right way. If you said no, that's totally cool because it's CSI 7. So technically there's a bunch of steps before you get to 7 that you want to address. Um, and it, a lot of folks said kind of. And I can relate to all of you because, yeah, we just we want to be here. We want to answer this thing. So let's get rid of the poll here and let's carry on. Um, no matter what you're, you said here, the goal is by the end of the webinar today, you will know what steps you need to take in order to answer yes. So you won't necessarily answer yes because we got to build some things in Pardot after this webinar to make that the case, but at least you'll know how to get there. You'll know what steps to take and you'll know the best practices to get there. So that's why I'm excited about this. Let's keep going. Um, let's make this happen. Okay, there we go. Scoring best practices. Let's get to it. By the way, who in here is international and loves themselves some football? In the U.S., we just had our Super Bowl, which is a different kind of football. And, uh, and I'm okay with Tom Brady winning another ring. But, of course, I'm a Patriots fan. So, all being said, one of the things when we talk about scoring is scoring is going to be literally a number in part out between zero and infinity. And one of the things you got to automatically avoid doing is getting in the weeds with sales or anyone on scoring itself. 
And so the scoring mechanism in Pardot allows you to increment this score automatically in global settings and also local settings and say, okay, if they take a particular action, increase their, their score. The goal is to try to show how engaged somebody is. And, and so, okay, it goes up, it goes up, it goes up. There's things like one point for a web page, 50 points for a form. And I remember being in a boardroom when I was little Casey, junior Casey, junior marketer, um, marketing manager, big software company. I remember being in a boardroom, the kind with like the wooden walls and big wooden table. And I was there with like the sales leader, the marketing leader. And I, I was taking notes. I think I was a note guy at that point. I remember spending an hour in that meeting or more. It felt like purgatory. And they were debating and some sales reps were in there. They were debating what numbers we should use in the scoring. Should we get, well, you know, page opens, I don't know. We should give the two. What about 2.5? Well, no, it's not, right? Literally hours spent debating the fine points of that. I got to tell you, it is not worth it because the number of times I can count that was needed on sort of on a professional level, right? So 3,200 part implementations. Casey, how many times did you need to completely revamp all of the lead scoring from what Pardot gave you by default? Like, I can count them on a hand, both of my hands, actually, maybe even one hand, very few and far between. Do you ever need to depart from changing the model dramatically? And so good old Batman saying like, nope, we're not talking about this. <laughs> Batman, don't hit Robin. But the idea is like, nope, we don't need to talk about changing the score, addressing it. And here's a, here's a quick example. Default scoring in Pardot has these points and they make total sense. And what's crazy is, it's by default, it's in your system. And if you didn't know this already, you could kind of give yourselves all a kinda on that CSI above because part of by default is actually, it's active. Scoring is active. Now, it may not be syncing over if you haven't connected the fields um, or whether you know or not, if you dropped it into the view so that sales can see what you know what score their, their prospects have, uh, it's, it's happening behind the scenes. Now, by itself, there's dangers to it. So it's probably not a good idea to just rush to get scoring out. And if you've already done that, you, maybe you've experienced the, the pain of rushing a score to get out there. But literally everything on here is actually great, except for one thing I'll highlight. Robin should know better about scoring points. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So one thing I sometimes will change is the idea of a webinar view. Right. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll say, look, if they registered for webinar, give them 50 points because they filled out a form and we'll talk about scoring best practices, the best way to address this. But let's say you get 50 points for filling out a form. I like to give people 50 points for attending a webinar, too, because you're here. You're all here now. Right. You're all here now or watching a recorded one. Hello. <laughs> and and that's a that's an important thing. So if we were in a buyer's journey together and you sat through an hour of me talking, that means I must be saying the right things and you must be looking for those things too, right? Somehow this is a mutual match and I should alert sales to harass you. Don't worry, they're not gonna harass you. But like it, it, in your situations, if someone's committing to not just doing a form, but actually listening to a whole video or listening to an hour long webinar, that's a, that's a thing you want to highlight in the score. So sometimes I'll tweak the score a little bit to give webinar views a little more juice, event um, attending, uh, a little more juice to that. But that's just a, a slight customization. Otherwise, I love what it has here. And it, there's a reason why. And I'll, I'll share that with in a second. But one of the ways you can change this is you can edit the scoring rules and you can say, you know what? They registered for this event or they attended this. I want to give them a boost to their score automatically by default. Now, one other thing, can you specify the meaning? Great question. By the way, if you have questions, I didn't say this at the beginning. If you have questions at any time, please use the chat. Don't necessarily, there will be Q&A at the end, but don't necessarily wait because you may forget. It might be great for everyone else to hear the, the question you asked now. The, the meaning of a custom redirect click. In part, you can set up custom redirects, which is simply you get one URL, and when somebody follows that URL, you can you actually, you can tag them with a Pardot campaign, magic, magic. It's like, beautiful um, because it stays it stays cookied on them so you can you can basically tag them with a source campaign and then track that they clicked on it and, and send them right on their way so one of the neat ways you can do that is you can if you don't necessarily have control over um, the whole process let's see like a link on a on a 
profile, right? My link on um, Twitter, it's just one link, but I want to note that you came from that click. I could make that link a Pardot redirect to wherever you're going. It's a quick pass through. They don't even know they touched Pardot and they end up where they wanted to go, but you tag them in the, in the meantime. And not only did you tag them, but also you know that they followed that link. So as soon as they're a known prospect, you know that they followed that link. So if I had one in here in, in, the, in the chat and you clicked on it, I would know specifically that you clicked on it. So it's great. So you can change the, the number on that, but you know what? It's To me, it's the same thing as a link click. So whether it's a custom redirect link, click, a click in an email, and click as a click. Um, and so that's what those are. Should each form get 50 points? Yes. Great question. I say yes, and I'll explain it in just a second. What would you do for different form submissions? Newsletter signups versus content downloads versus contact me now. Oh, that is a fantastic question. Um, and I will, I will adjust that in a second. Uh, it's only recorded if there's a Pardot tracking code on the page with a link correct. No, Pardot redirects are freestanding. So you can, he, I, you can literally have some go from some website you don't control to another website you don't control. But if you made the link, you will record it either way. So it's pretty cool. Will this session be recorded and sent out to us afterward? Yes. Gosh, I love all these questions. Let me get to, this is how you modify scoring. You don't really need to because let me, uh, and there's also categories. So I just want to highlight this for everyone. Um, I don't want to necessarily go down a rabbit hole because categories are not necessary to get a one on the maturity model, but that's a nice little feature that's there. You can actually set categories for different products. This is the best use case. If you have multiple products, you can have product level um, scoring. And so what you do is you put all the assets related to each individual project uh, product in separate folders in Pardot. So you can have all that content hosted. And then when any of those, those items are accessed or any of those things are triggered, it can increment the score specifically for that product. This could be helpful for showing sales. Okay, their overall score is 200, but a good 90, you know, 193 of it was related to product A right? Versus product B. And that way they can go in knowing, okay, they're probably interested in this. You can do that for products, for industries, for categories, all sorts of things. So cool thing to know about, but we would definitely want to make sure we get the basic scoring and grading done first. And then you'd want to circle back around to ninja level scoring. Okay. Great, great, great. So lots of great questions. Oop. Go down here real quick. Okay, so I will get through all your questions. Let me talk to this slide because it's going to answer a lot of the questions that were asked. And then if I forgot anything, I'm going to scroll up and down through it. So this is perfect. How many points to award? Here's the thing. We, we, we said don't get in a, in a debate with people on how many points to add because in the grand scheme of things, and I know someone asked, hey, should I get 50 points for this? And the answer is simple. The simple answer is yes. The bigger answer is it doesn't really matter what you score things as long as you maintain the ratio of big score, little score. And I know it sounds simple, maybe even trite, but that's on purpose because there is, and this is actually, this is actually the strategy. They didn't name it this. I named it this, that Pardot's lead score follows too. So here's the idea. We want to measure how engaged somebody is using the score. And so the way to do that is you give more points uh, for the more work someone had to take to take that action, right? So for example, um, typically by default, you don't give any, any scores for opening a page or, uh, or um, opening an email, right? Because maybe you didn't click on anything. But let's say you click on a link. To click on a link, you had to move your little finger. There's maybe several muscles firing in there. Click, okay. Give that some points to show that it happened. Viewing a web page usually gets one point, right? Did it really? It was another little finger click. Boop, there they went. There's not much engagement there. They just clicked on a few things. And the idea is okay, reward them for those things so they gradually add up, but they shouldn't equal the bigger engagement or the bigger involvements. So, big score, that was little score. Big score are things like forms. And if you think about a form as a barter, right? You're bartering with someone. I'm gonna give you my content in exchange for you giving me your data. And people don't necessarily wanna do that. So there's a little friction in there. And so if they're doing it, it's a big deal. 
and, and hopefully your forms are going to be efficient. There's another webinar you can watch to make your forms more efficient. But let's say your forms are efficient. There are only a couple of fields, but you want to reward someone because what do they have to do? They weren't just moving their little click finger. They were going, huh, do I want to fill this thing out? Is it worth it? Their brain's churning. Okay, it's worth it. They only have four questions. Typing in their name or using autofill, typing in their email. Hopefully you're not asking phone number first right off the, the gate, but you're, they're filling out some questions, right? They took a little time to answer that thing. And so that's why I give big score 50 points. Little scores are like, I don't care how many points you give them. You could make big score 100 and little score in tens. Don't care as long as this ratio is preserved. Of What I don't want to have happen is people can easily do a little score to equal a big score. It needs to be dramatic enough, right? 50 to one, 50 to five. Um, is really the ratio to maintain. Now, again, I say all this, this is already built in by default into Pardot. But if you were going to add anything else, um, you would want to know what the overall scheme is. And that's the big score, little score ratio. So if you look at the prospect, prospect score over time in this example, it's the red line, right? What happens? They come to your site, view in a couple pages, they get a little points here and there, a couple points for every page. And then what do they do? They fill out a form. Boom, you see that big jump that happens. And, and so then maybe they get in your nurture campaign and we're sending them emails. They do a few things. Maybe they, maybe they looked at some emails, but that doesn't count as points. They eventually clicked an email. They got three points here and there. They, they shopped around some more. And then you see that second form gets filled out. Boom, and they got another 50 points. And what did they do? They went past this threshold. So when you think about scoring, it measures engagement, but it's also a way for us to trigger from a global perspective, a rule that says, when is somebody engaged enough to talk to sales? And the idea is to move out of the, the just you know one hit wonders of they fill out one form, they go right to sales because that's not usually um, someone who's ready to talk to sales, especially if it's an earlier question, a newsletter, um, they just want to get your content. Now they're talking to sales. Like, I don't want to talk to someone unless it's a contact us form, right? But so so typically what you want is to have a couple of these forms in there and then it goes over a threshold. Ideally, your threshold is 100. It fits well with this because really what it means is you can do all these little actions, but really you want to fill out two forms. And then at least it's not a fluke. And then with two forms, you can actually gather more data. You can gather different data points. You can ask different questions on each form. That's what's called progressive profiling. There was a question on where can I find out more information on the webinar and the forms, making them... Uh, automatically adjust. It's really cool. Activate your content. There's a recording right there in the chat. So that's the one to check out. Um, and so, but you can see the idea, right? We have a threshold. We have a couple forms. It gets us there. That's the mechanism. And then behind the scenes, big score, little score, all good. So let me just check the questions here real quick. When I set up different categories for different drip campaigns, so not product specific ones, but campaign specific, I don't think I would. I think, um, I think there's a lot of fish to fry and, and scoring is not really that useful, right? Scoring is helpful, but, but it's more useful when you combine scoring and grading. And we're going to get into that more, but I don't, I don't usually like to go too crazy on scoring unless I've done everything else. And I'm like, Hmm, what other edges can I add? Otherwise going um, for different scoring categories on, on campaigns, not so much, not so much. Cause, it, cause again, you could track it, but then usually sales is the one reading it and you need to make it super simple. So they're like, what does this mean? Right. And so um, when you talk to sales and you say, Hey, the higher the number, the more interested they are, they can usually get that. Is there a default score for threshold for prospects turning into qualified lead? Yeah. 100 is the default in my head. That's usually what we talk to people about in, in the reason it is there. Um, i.e. they should hit 500 points before I pass them sales. Yeah, the reason it is at 100 is because it's in my mind, it's filling out two forms. Now, sometimes we work with groups that, where they have one form goes right to sales, so ingrained in their culture, they're going to have to keep up a standard quo, you know, st status quo when they start with Pardot. So we're like, okay, but what you can do is you, you set all the automation rules behind the scenes to make the threshold 50 points, right? You don't change all your scoring metrics. The score is the score, but you can raise and lower the threshold depending on where your organization's at. Okay, you know, let's raise it to 100 now. Now, when you raise it to 100, less leads will go through, right? But higher quality leads will go through. So the more you push that threshold out, 
the more engaged people are going to be by the time they get to sales, which usually means a better quality lead, not necessarily quality, but at least more engaged lead by the time they get to sales. And sales does love engaged leads. So 100 is a good middle ground because you're not saying they have to hit like five forms and, you know, and do all these sort of rituals and dances to get in. But you're also saying, you know, two forms means it wasn't a fluke. Sometimes people fill out forms. We used to have an ad campaign where we'd, we'd offer like language learning software and then people filled it out and they weren't interested at all. Like it was a fluke, right? So sometimes you get those. So when there's two forms though, it's usually, it's usually dummy proof, right? It's usually not someone just accidentally filling it out because they were, they were lost. Um, so two is pretty good. Three is fantastic too, but you can raise and lower that thing. You can also make it like 110 points. You know, and that just makes it a little bit, a little bit harder. Make sure people are a little more engaged to get sent over. But with a hundred, it's like a perfect magic ratio. Two forms get sent over. The other reason for that is, and someone asked earlier. By the way, it was a great question, Adam. Um, the other question was around, yeah, Claudia. Awesome question. Would you do different form submissions? Uh, what do you, what would you do for different ones? Newsletter versus content versus contact me now. As a rule, I tend to have all of my forms stay at 50, right? Because even if it's a short one, like a newsletter, they still, they, they negotiated, they bartered, they put some information, they hit submit, right? So it took a little bit of commitment. I like keeping track of every time you've done a barter like that. So technically you could come in, sign up for the newsletter, you got 50, but now you probably need to get one of our content pieces to go to a hundred, right? So that's why that hundred is kind of magical. Now the exception is, and Claudia put this in her question, well, what about the contact me now? Yes, that would be different. Contact me now. What I do is on the form itself, I give it 50 points for submission. It's basically an extra 50 points. So globally, every form gets 50. The contact me now gets an additional 50. So what happens? It comes in, it automatically goes to sales. So that's how you can use that same threshold. And you can have all the other forms come in. They don't immediately go to sales. Contact us immediately goes to sales. And anyone else that's coming back to fill out their second and third form, they go to sales at the right time and place, right? So that's the magic of big score, little score. That's how um, I keep track of it all. Cool. Well, let's go back here. Okay, why scoring alone breaks everything. And let me just move over here. Boom. Oh, cool. Two windows, I'll use these. Okay. Check out the questions and make sure we got them all. Um, okay. Is there best practice for the time limit for the score up? I imagine it would depend on the length of sales cycle. What do you mean by that? Do you want to deduct some score from people? Is that is that related to that? Um, you know, Jenna, go, out, you go ahead and just throw it in the chat if, if, if it is or it isn't. But one of the things on, on timing, um, I know different tools. Marketo has some recency um, indications and other people have that. I tend to like to keep the score running over time. Um, and sometimes I'll write a little workflow behind the scenes to indicate if there's been a fast increase, kind of like the stars and the flames in Marketo. But for the most part, I don't like to deduct score from people. By default, you'll see that Pardot will reduce score if you lose an opportunity or if you go to the career page. I like the idea of reducing opportunity, reducing score for going to the career page because that's like, it's almost like a bad engagement. Like if you're doing that, maybe you want to work here. Cool. Come work here, but we won't sell you. I don't want to send you to my sales guide or gal and have them chase you down and you're just trying to get a job here. So I do like that as like a negative engagement, but you know, if you lost an opportunity, Whose fault is that? It's no, it's like nobody's fault per se. Maybe sales, if you want to, but it, but it doesn't mean they're score, they're not any less engaged, right? So, I don't usually like to deduct score for people, even if it's been a while, because I want to show at some point they were really engaged. Because the other reason is they didn't lose that information, right? Maybe they're not current with what we're talking about, but at some point if they did a bunch of research, I want us to know they did a bunch of research, so we don't treat them like a newbie when they come in to get some more um, content. Um, not looking to duck per se, but thinking about engagement waning as time goes on. Overanalyzing, maybe, but we'll get the grading and scoring combined and then let's see how you feel about that. Thoughts on separating 
uh, call to action and non call to action form fills. Example, scoring lower for white paper or case study gated content versus demo. Well, totally, totally. And, and, I don't know about the definition of the CTA versus non-CTA, but I'm with you. Contact us, request a demo, anything where we need to actually re reply to them, <laughs> we need to do something back right away, totally. Give it that extra 50 points on the form so that they get to 100 right away and they go right to sales. So totally agree. Demo should get it. Contact us should get it. You know, RFP help, any kind of thing that's like, no, I actively want to call schedule. I actively, actively want to talk to you. Um, even increment them for doing chat. If you're doing qualified chat, I don't know if anyone's heard of qualified. Uh, we love helping people set that up. If they're doing a chat with someone, increment their score for that because they're engaging directly with someone on your team. So yeah, totally worth increasing that so that one, you can follow up on the action and two, you can give them proper credit for that. Uh, so yeah, great question from Christy and Jackie. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, makes sense. Wouldn't you want to say a newsletter sign up versus a content download are different journey stages? Yeah, totally. Different journey stages, but in the in the global sense, they're engaging. So what I, I try to do is I focus more time and attention on grading and scoring. I just let it continue to bubble up, right? You're right. If, if somebody's getting some more early stage content for some late stage content, you could give more credit for late stage content than early stage content. But the problem is it all gets added together and it kind of washes out. So you don't really know. So even if you put details in different levels in your scoring, it all gets added together with all the web page clicks and all the, the web page views. And then sales gets a number like 403. And so, so you could do that, but it, it kind of washes. So it may not be worth the effort in that. And I had a funny story, super quick. There was a CRM that used to use Pardot. Competitor the sales force can't name any names because they're, they were client, but they, they, they needed some help. And they said, Hey, um, our scoring is messed up. And that's because score, the score went anywhere from 4,000 to three. And that's because not only do they have global scoring settings, but on each and every asset, each and every email click, um, custom redirect, all these things, you have the ability to change the score. You can add extra score. And they did that. And they had like nine different reasons for doing it, nine different eight in in thirty six different places, and so they ended up with a score that was so unreadable that sales clearly wasn't using it. And it was kind of a joke, like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna send me another four thousand today, marketing, right?" So that's where it can run away from you if you get if you tweak it too much like that. So that's just something to watch out for. Okay, when scoring breaks, and that was a good example of when scoring breaks. Another reason when scoring breaks is the fact that it's one dimensional. And this is a picture of me uh, in Iraq back in the day. It's me on the right. That's my war face. <laughs> and th that's my friend, Ben. He's such a nice guy, but he's got his war face on too. And this was right before we were supposed to go on our first mission while in Iraq at night. So we're pretty serious, right? Um, come to find out it was postponed and canceled the next night. But, but either, either way, it went off without a hitch, but we were pretty serious. The reason I bring this up is because for a while when I was in Iraq, I was driving. Um, and driving is pretty fun. Humvees are pretty neat, but at night it's a little crazy. Um, and I don't know if anyone in the chat has ever used NVGs, any, any other veterans in the chat. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the thank you, by the way. And any other veterans that are here, thank you guys for your service too. But one of the things that you find is that when you drive with these night vision goggles, right? Uh, you might've seen them in the James Bond movies, but they, you have two eyes, but usually it gives you one eye that's looking at, at the, the place you're looking at. So when it goes from one eye into, into your two, you lose depth perception. It's like basically looking at a TV in front of your eyes. And so you don't actually know how far things are. You just can guess based on like, well, that looks like it's good. That road's getting smaller. So either, either the road's turning into a, a tiny road or that's the depth, but you have to get, you literally can't see it. There's no depth perception to it. And so the I have crazy adventures. We can, you know, next time Dreamforce is live, we'll tell stories around the open bar. It'll be fun. But I have times where I was driving and to my right, there was reeds. And to my left, there was a hill. And unknown to me, the reeds were actually a, like a swamp or a, a river, an irrigation. So I'm glad I didn't go over there, but you can't quite see anything. So anyways, what's crazy is it's hard to drive like this. And it's, and it's also what we're kind of doing to sales. When you only give them one dimension, when you give them just lead score, 
it can be really crazy. And so here's a quick quiz. Have fun with me. <laughs> Tell me, um, I have two prospects for you to call. You get to be sales for a moment. Prospect A has a score of 820. Prospect B has a score of 60. Who are you going to call first? Prospect A, yes. Good, good. And please vote A or B. And while you're doing that, I'll check the questions real quick. What are your thoughts on restructuring the entire scoring grading um, system that we have currently going on? Like, what if we want to start from scratch again? What's the best way to do it? Best way to do it, um, return to the truth. <laughs> best way to do it on, on scoring is go back to default scores on Pardot. And the cool thing is scoring on Pardot is actually retroactive. So if you change anything, if you tweak anything in the global scoring settings, it'll change it for all your prospects, which is really kind of neat. So you can undo any craziness you maybe created in the system. So you go back to default scoring on, on the Pardot score, and then you focus on grade. If you're going to start over and do it from scratch, that's what you do. Um, if you're importing, um, or let's say you have, let's say your prospects have crazy scores, you can actually and and ping us afterward because this is one of the things you need to make sure you don't mess it up. But you can actually um, export a list of all your prospects with their score, and then you can make another column with the inverse of that number. You have 120, cool, negative 120, down a column. And then you can re-upload that as their score, uh, as a score modifier and zero out everyone's scores. But that's kind of dangerous and we should talk about it first. So <laughs> uh, so email me, Casey at CheshireImpact.com if you have a question about that. But yeah, starting over might be the right thing to do um, so that you don't send the wrong information to sales. So, okay, back to our example. Um, <laughs> Parker knows the answer. <laughs> stop, stop spoiling it. You're supposed to say spoiler alert, Parker. Okay, so I have A. Uh, Christina is crazy. She's calling B. I don't know why she's calling B, other than maybe she's been to the webinar before. Um, uh, I, another great answer I would wait for the grade. Yes, depends on their grade. Totally. It's a trick question. Yes, it is, Claudia. Who would you call? Well, here's what we do without grade, we tell sales, whether we realize it or not, to call prospect A right? And sometimes we get aggressive and we're like, guys, look, you never call my prospects. I need you to call them like right now, or I'm going to tell on you, or I'm going to be mad or you won't get any more leads or whatever, right? We can get really aggressive because we're, please call these people, man. I spent money on them. And what happens? Prospect A, Parker called it. Hey, meet Sammy. NYU undergrad doing some research for his project. <laughs> he wanted to learn more about your industry. And he filled out all of your forms, right? How did he get to 820 or whatever it was? Filled out everything you have. Partners sometimes do this. I, a lot of people are trying to sell to you. We'll download all your stuff. Um, and long and the short, Sammy is not a good lead. And we do this in marketing all the time. If we try to put our foot forward saying, call this person, they're the best. They're not the best. So that's how you can see leading with lead score can be terrible. And by the way, uh, a lot of um, seasoned sales reps and executives have like, like are triggered by score because they've had to deal with it so many times and it's so useless to them. They completely ignore it. So if you're in that zone, zeroing out scores might be a good idea. Just say, I know, I know that last system was hogwash, but here's what the expert recommended on the webinar or here or we could talk about how to best present it to them um that's a that's another webinar but but yeah this is the right way to do it so we need scoring and grading one of the things has anyone seen this movie does anyone quick 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 question what movie is this do you know what this movie is and meanwhile this is, see these are designed so i can check the questions can you tell me what grading is haven't used it yes will we're going to talk about grading next what i wanted to do was set everyone up to realize scoring is cool and then realize ooh, by itself it's kind of not cool and then we're going to talk about grading next bill great job is glenn, glenn gary glenn ross if you want to get the head of sales i know they say that they're not supposed to sell like this but they sometimes still do it's a movie called glenn gary glenn ross it's crazy and alec here has a speech where he's like oh he's big closing he has a potty mouth and he tells sales what's up and one guy tries to drink coffee and he's like put the coffee down because coffee's for closers right so whew, intense movie but one of the things you realize whether it's this movie or if you've ever tried sales as a marketer is that sales is just all about prioritizing their time right they have a, a week or a set number of time to get calls out to close deals to work the legal side they've all these different activities 
But the goal is for them to get paid. A lot of times it's so commission based on sales for them to get paid. They got to close deals. So they're thinking, okay, is this prospect going to close? Is this prospect going to close? If I can only get 10 calls done today, who are the right people I should call? Right. And if we're not telling them, if we're telling them some crazy lead score number, they're like, you're not helping me. I'm ignoring anything you're saying and probably your content too. So that's what we're trying to avoid. But what we are trying to do with scoring and grading is help sales prioritize their time, right? So if you weren't sure the goal of why are we doing grading and scoring is just to make, make marketing cool, it's so that we can help make sales more efficient and more effective. And so when they close more deals, thanks to our leads, or they call the ones that we're saying, these ones are showing better signs, they're like, cool, thanks for the heads up. And they, they use our information. And if they start using scoring and grading, they'll start using other things that we're capturing in Pardot and it's a whole snowball. I want the good leads, the Glen Gary leads. All right, quick poll, quick poll. What's life without a quick poll? What makes everything better? I've got a bunch of stickers on here. Bacon makes everything better. Chocolate makes everything better. What makes everything better? Grading makes everything better, of course. So does bacon, beer, coffee, chocolate. Or did I forget something? Did we forget something? Throw it in the comments. Um, don't forget to vote here so that your voice is known. But also, if we, if we pick the wrong option, throw it in the chat. And we'll get, got like a second more. Oh, good call, Stacy. Money makes everything better. Hey, good one. Good one. All right. Wine, sweet, good call. What kind of wine, though? I'm, I'm curious now. Um, all right, let's close the poll and see what we got. The beach and sunshine, bourbon. Now we're talking puppies. True. Okay, chocolate one, not surprising. Narrowly beat out coffee. Coffee coming up the rear, followed by beer right on. And we got some wine and money in the chat. Bacon, hey, bacon cannot be uh, left out. So, okay, grading makes everything better. And so that's what we're going to talk about next. Uh, I'm sure Will's like, what are we going to talk about grading? We're talking about grading now. And if there's one slide that you wanted to screenshot or grab or something, it'd be this one. Or remember or write down, you want to pull it up in the recording. It's this one um, because this is how you use them together. So let's talk about scoring and grading. And this is also for those of my, my pros that are with me here, humbled that you're here. We're collaborating together. These are also some of the ways I found that it's great for sharing with other people. How do you tell other people? How do you tell sales what scoring and grading is? Well, this is how you tell them. Scoring is how interested they are in you. Grading how's, is how interested you are in them. So again, how, they, how interested they are in you is their score. It's how engaged they are. Like, oh, they're really interested. Sammy, that student was really interested in you. How interested are you in Sammy? Not at all. Right. So when you have two dimensions, you're not in Iraq driving with NVGs anymore. You have two dimensions you can see. It's like a mutual relationship. Right. So for a prospect, it needs to be mutual. If you're just grading them on how interested they are in you, you're going to have a lot of people that you don't want, you know they're trying to get a job. How, how interested they are in us? Very. How interested are we in them? Not, at least as a lead. Okay. Um, scoring is tracking activity and engagement. Grading will be tracking the quality of that lead. So anything to do with activity or an action they take, ACT, needs to be their score. Anything to do with them inherently or something about them, nothing they've done, no action they've taken is the grade. It's really important. Like if I was hanging out with you guys at Dreamforce and there was a dry erase board, I would draw a line between these two. Don't mix and match these two styles Oftentimes, I've seen people put in the grade, well, you know what? If they engage with three of our forms, let's increase their grade. No, don't do that. Why? It's an action. That's how interested they are in you. It cannot sneak its way over into grade. When you do it that way, you can make grading not effective, and then the whole thing's ineffective, and then sales still doesn't like it, right? So anything to do with their actions that they take, attended a webinar, registered for a webinar, met with you for a dinner, and any action they take is a score. If you want to increment that, de decrement that, that's fine. And the grade would be something about them. And we're going to talk about this next, but it'd be things like, you know, do they have budget? Are, is it the, are they the right title? Are they the decision maker? All these different things. 
And we're going to talk more about that, but it's a letter grade. So the scoring is a number. The grade is a letter. Why? So you can tell people, hey, 302 B, simple, right? You keep it simple. If you give two people numbers or there's two numbers or there's two letters or there's stars and flames and, and grades and scores and all these things, very confusing. Your end user is sales. They're trying to prioritize their time. They don't want to learn all your crazy things. They just want to know who should I call first, right? So we're going to make it simple for them. Scoring is a number that increases. Grade is a grade that increases. Keep in mind, little power tip, Pardot grade starts out as a D and it's invisible. And every time they get a question correct, and we'll talk about how to do that, you increment, you increment their grade. And by the way, we have a little minutes to go. We still have some time. So what I'm going to do is knowingly go over on time. If you can stay with me, fantastic. If you can't, all good. Grab the recording. But I want to make sure your questions get answered as well as we really, really, I make sure you absolutely cover this. So again, it's in the recording if you need it. That said, the final part is interesting on this chart. Scoring by itself was like for sales, right? And they hated it. When scoring is combined with grading, scoring is mostly for marketing. You notice how we were talking about big score, little score. And the reason we had score is so we could decide when to send them to sales. That's a number that we care about. So sales does not need to know. Treasure impact. Sales does not know <laughs> all the different bells and whistles of the score. But they do know that the higher the number goes, the more engaged that prospect is. It's, it's my mechanism on the marketing side for setting a bar in the system to send people over at a certain point. Now, I may raise and lower it based on my feedback that I get from sales and other people, but it's primarily marketing's mechanism. Grading is sales' primary mechanism. They, they will appreciate score, but they want we need grade to be the thing that they zero in on. In, com in combination, they're fantastic, but grade is going to be really important to them. So just real quick, that last thing, if you would even write this phrase down, scoring is how interested they are in you. Grading is how interested you are in them, right? Two-way relationship. That's the money. Okay, let's talk about setting up grade so that we do this. And actually, before we do that, let me just see, are there any, um, any questions? Bourbon and puppies. And then we have a great question about how do you grade your leads at Cheshire? By industry, job title? Which industry, job title is most likely to convert? Great question. Great question. Got grading. Let's talk about grading. I literally just put this in here just to make us all think about Oreos for just a second. Sorry, not sorry. Let's talk about grading. Okay. How do we grade? And then I will, Jackie, specifically talk about how Cheshire Impact does it because we basically do it this way. So best practices. In order to set up grade, it's not as simple as like, oh, Pardot gave us a default. We kind of just go with it. Maybe tweak one number and call it a day. Grading requires a conversation with sales. Now, in the CSI, this is CSI 7. CSI 6, the step right before this, we're actually going to be training. It's all about training sales to know about Pardot nurturing. And we Cheshire actually does a 25-minute sales training just for sales, by sales, by our sales team. Um, we can we can teach you how to do it too. It has a whole separate webinar and aligning with sales. You do that first because it starts the conversations going and, and you also show some early wins with CSI number six. Because when you get to CSI number seven, you need to have a conversation with sales. They need to take you seriously. And the questions you're going to ask them are, what kind of qualities do you want in your best leads? Or tell me about your best, the best deals you got. Tell me about the people that signed the deal with you. Who did you want to talk to? And sometimes they know, sometimes they don't. But ideally, they're going to start saying like, oh, well, you know, we love talking to uh, directors of marketing. You know, um, CMOs and VPs are good, but usually the director is like ready to roll up their sleeves and buy something because it's time to execute, right? You might hear that from sales. You know, whatever title or whatever department, oh, IT. We, and the one group was, um, oh, we want IT project managers or something like that, okay? So they may, they may know that. But what you want is to have this open dialogue with them to say, who do you want? And, and just listen at that point. Thank you, Parker. I appreciate that, man. Um, killer compliment. So when in doubt, you ask them first, because here's the thing. At the end of the day, we don't need sales to agree to how our scoring sets up. They just need to know that big, big is engaged, right? But we want them to completely agree with the grade. So there's like a little negotiation here and we can kind of help them through this. So, and, and kudos, if your sales team rattles off, boom, 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 our best buyer, this is like an ABM tie-in as well. Our best buyer is five to $20 million company. Our uh, best point of contact to start the whole process in the account sale is the 
director of marketing or the VP of marketing. Those are the best ones. And, and they're in this geography and they're in this and they're in this and this and this, right? If they know those things, fantastic. If they don't, there's some work we got to do. And by the way, if you encounter any problems along the way here, or you want to like game plan before you chat with sales, hit me up in an email, Casey at CheshireImpact.com. I'll give you some tips, talk you through it. You start by asking sales. But I got to tell you, one time I was in a boardroom, a little different than the other boardroom story. Now I'm the consultant. I'm like I'm coming in to sort of help sort things out for a company in California. Really cool team, big boardroom, lots of people, VPs of this and that, sales and marketing. I don't know if the CEO is there, or, um, but a lot of the directors, head of marketing, um, we're all going to talk about their best, their lead scoring and grading and their best lead qualities. And they invited this BDR guy too, which is really wise of them. Because when I asked the question, who's your best lead? What are the qualities of them? It was like crickets. Nobody knew, right? Other times I've had the team have crickets and the sales manager chimes in, but this is what it is. Sometimes I have the the team chime in. So all different things happen. But in this particular case, nobody really knew. Um, and they were debating and they're like, well, I'd call everybody and you'll get that too. We can talk through how to deal with that. But this one particular BDR guy was in there and, and he was the guy. BDR is just the business dev rep. He's like the junior sales guy or gal. And they're cold calling a lot of these fresh leads or warm calling if they're set up right and part out. He, he said, well, actually, if I mention one of three things to people, they always call me back. Huh. We asked him some other questions. He knew some more of it. Hey, who calls you back? What do they say, right? So sometimes it's the SDR, BDR team that knows these things. But you, you, what you're doing is you're guiding them through the process of if they haven't already decided who their best leads are, you're helping them sort out what the criteria is. When in doubt, you can use BANT. I think we have this on that. Yeah, we talk about BANT next. Um, and one quick thing on, on grading and scoring because um, we don't have time to necessarily build it right now, but the, I think I'll, I have a slide on it. But how it works is it's like a question and answer style. So you don't just say this lead based on all these things is an A. What you do is you say a criteria might be geography. Um, are they in the US? Or well, let's say you can serve North America, right? Are they in North America? Yes or no. If they are, they're great matches and you increment their score and they go from a D to a C. They, if they match another question, they can go from a C to a B. Another question, B to an A. So they have to answer, to get to an A, they have to answer like four questions correctly. Now you can also decrease their grade. Are they in North America? No. Okay. Decrement their grade. Um, unless you serve every country. Unless there's some countries like there's a trade embargo and you can't serve that country. Well, you probably don't want sales calling them, right? So you can decrease the grade for those people. But it's a and a style. So it's not just like... Um, all these criteria, make it an A. You have to have them increment. But the good news is that means you're not waiting to get all the answers to make anything happen. Every time you get a new piece of data or new form gets filled out, you increase the grade. So really cool. All right, let's talk about BANT. When in doubt, BANT is great for lead grading. And because I mentioned earlier, it's Q&A style, we actually need several questions to be answered correctly to be able to send a lead over as an A. And it's really important, really important that you send more A's than B's, more B's than C's than D's. This is your own internal marketing. This is your own brand. How are you as a marketer? What do you send over? Are you Fred who sends over the D's, right? I don't send D's over. Uh, actually, D doesn't show up, but um, I only, and I definitely don't send F's over, right? If it's an F, it doesn't even go over. So one of the criteria in the past to sales can be make sure we have their phone number, the critical information, the score is the appropriate amount and their grade is not a D or an F or maybe an F, whatever you want to set that to. Um, because ideally you want to have them see more A's than not. So sometimes I'll make sure there's geography in there because everyone fits that, but it confirms that that's there and it bumps up one more letter grade to get where I'm needing to go. BANT is basic, um, basic level qualification. Like if I was your sales manager and you're in my meeting today and you're like, Casey, I brought this deal in. They're really close. Oh yeah, really close. Tell me about this. Do they have budget? Well, I didn't ask them that. Okay, go ask them that. Right. So that's what sales managers do. They're like asking them these kind of questions. And there's different styles and formats for these kind of pre-qualification pre-qualification questions. But a simple one is Bant, and it can get more complicated from there. So if your sales team has a complicated thing, you can ask them what the questions are on that complicated thing, and you can pre-screen people for those questions. No worries, Jackie. Catch you on the recording. 
And uh, yeah, have a fantastic Thursday. So budget authority need timeline. Those are great questions to ask where on your forms. So this is where you're thinking, okay, I want to capture some data points on my forms. I need to get these qualification questions in there. On the webinar, we linked it to earlier. Let's put it also in the chat. There's a webinar on really refining your forms and your landing pages. We talked through the different ways you can have different forms ask different questions, but you want to start sliding in grading questions into those forms. Otherwise, if you don't get the question answered, you won't be able to grade the people and you'll only send through maybe a C or two. And you really need to be able to ask enough questions to get the A's in there. That's why I like geography, because if you can automatically identify the geography or if they turn that off, you don't. But if you, if you have some kind of indication of certain things, then you can just automatically bump their grade. Sweet. There it is in the, uh, in the chat. Awesome. Yeah, Claudia, no worries. We'll catch you later. All right. Fit or not fit. Already covered this in theory. Just wanted you to see it live. How you actually set up the, the, the grading in Pardot is a two-part series. There's a thing over here called segmentation profiles, and you'll probably never have used it before unless you looked at grading. And so you're like, what? I can never find it when I'm doing like a live thing to show people because it's not called grading. It's called profile. So you just, you can create multiple profiles too. You can have a different profile for your IT buyer versus your marketing buyer. If you have um, product asset managers versus IT asset managers, you can have different profiles. Mostly though, people are going to fit the same profile unless you sell dramatically different things. If you sell recruiting services to the HR people and you sell marketing services to the marketer, that might be a great use of a separate profile. Otherwise, they're all in a default profile. You can give it a name if you want best buyer. And all you do on the profile is you list out whatever criteria you want to check people on. Role, budget, timeline, department, region. That's it. And you sign how much of the grade matters based on this answer. You can actually weight things differently. Well, geography is important, but not nearly as important as role. My power tip for you is to leave those all at a full letter grade. Because if you don't, you may increment people a third here, a third there, a third here. And guess what? Perfect lead is now a C plus. Sales is not going to like that. They're not going to want to call that. So when in doubt, give it a full letter grade unless you've got so much criteria and so many answers are coming in that you can get complicated that way. Otherwise, leave it full grade. And then from there, you're actually going to create an automation rule that simply says if they meet this criteria, you're going to go down here to change profile criteria. Again, it's, it should be called grading or something, but change profile criteria to, and you pick the category and you just say matches. If you say matches, it's going to increment their grade one letter score. If you say does not match, it'll decrease their grade, that full letter score. All right. Who do you call on this one? Quiz number two. This is how you redeem yourself from quiz number one, where a lot of you didn't even answer. Who are you going to... Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call on this one? B. Yes. Right? And, and notice how much easier that is. <clears throat> we avoided Sammy like the plague. Sorry, Sammy. Call me when you're ready for an internship. Now, one thing I might even change about this. What I like to do when you're showing leads and you definitely want to make sure you get the grade and the score on the, on the leads inside of Salesforce you want to make sure that column is available on their lead view. So as sales is looking at new leads to call, you want scoring and grading to be on there. But I actually like to have it sorted first by grade, then by score. Why? Puts all your A's at the top and then shows who the most engaged ones down to least engaged. All the B's after that, most engaged to least engaged. C's, maybe no D's and F's, right? So now sales, it's clear. These are all A's. And by the way, you want them to call an A and be like, yep, that's what I asked for, right? There should be no disagreement. If there is, redo the whole thing. Like, hold on. You asked for this, 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 right? I know I had other ideas, but we agreed this is an A. So they should call that A and be like, yeah, that's what I, who I was looking for. Otherwise, you change the criteria. But the idea is they call A's and like, great. And, they, and what that did is it prioritized their time. Now they're thankful for that. And if the, the, the high grade person with a low score doesn't call them back right away, that's okay. They know it's an A. They know it's a decision maker or the right criteria they're looking for. Cool. Real quick on the future, then we'll call it a day because I know we're already in the future past our, our hour long thing. But those of you who haven't, haven't met me yet, we tend to go over because there's just so much to talk about, especially this topic. It's just so important. Real quick on the future, 
careful on um, content, just simple warning on people talking about predictive scoring that are selling predictive scoring. Okay. Um, this particular one, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the shade for later, but I just, it, it, there's a, a lot of talk about it, but when it really comes down to predictive scoring, um, what does AI do? There's, there's AI that's like here to destroy us, but there's also augmented intelligence, right? And that augmented intelligence, that's here to help us spot patterns. So when we talk about Einstein, when we talk about Salesforce and getting the AI inside of our marketing, we're using it to spot patterns. It's not witchcraft. It's not magic. It's not going to also tell us, it's not going to tell us more about our buyer. We need to talk to our buyers one-on-one. -on -one. But if we got the data points in our CRM, somewhere reportable, wherever it is, we can start predicting things. We can start looking at patterns. Now, one thing I would say is I feel like, I feel like AI can be much more helpful helping us figure out the grading patterns, right? Because the activity patterns can be really hard to figure out. It can be really hard to discern. And it's also not nearly as important, right? People do more actions, they go different places. That's where you even get to like multi-touch reporting. That can be helpful, but there's some clear answers at the beginning. And really, if we just nail the grading, and again, it's something that sales agrees to, that, that's way more powerful than any predictive. It, even if you had the simplest grading scheme, but sales completely agreed to it and they loved it, that would be better for you than even going into some of these new techs until you can kind of get sales to kind of mature in there. And we can talk through that in a little bit later. There's some further CSI webinars that get into that, but just something to think about, right? All right, a couple quick shout outs. Um, and they will have some Q&A and some party time, open bar over there in the back if you haven't already got your drink order in. Um, join the Part Out Life Hacks user group. Uh, we'll put a link in the chat. If you don't know about this thing, is the best thing since Pardot itself came out. It's this global user group. It's for everyone. We we do not exclude anyone. There are groups that are like, you can you come in? Can you not come in? No, 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 none of that. Bring everybody in here. We're all here to help each other out. It's the Ohana. It's the community. Uh, I'm in there. You can direct message me. That's the best way to get in contact with me or Casey at CheshireImpact.com. Uh, Pardot Life Hacks. Uh, there's a link right there to join yes it's free it's free there are no strings and it's just a bunch of users in there helping each other out we we post jobs so if your company's looking for someone you can post that in there if you're looking for a job you can check that out in there there's a bunch of job posts in there questions about pardot questions about salesforce because you're getting so much more connected it's all there so while these webinars are great to give you these powerful chunks the one day off day in little quick power change you have a quick question about something part of life hacks is the way to do it um, and there's also a podcast hosted by our very own Christina Anderson. What? And uh, she needs to check that out because she, she's interviewing some amazing people and, and getting all their their strategies. I'm just one, one Pardot person in the ecosystem. There's a lot of people there and we just love learning from all of them. The other thing we have, uh, oh, speaking of the Pardot Lifehacks user group, we have this thing coming up. The, the Lifehacks user group is presenting. They're doing um, a, it's not even a webinar. It's a user group. And the key topic of the user group is about naming conventions and organizing your campaign reporting, campaign hierarchy. This is so important. You got to do it right once and then you're good. If you don't, <laughs> you can be crazy. So, um, and what's cool about the Life Hacks user groups is it's more, it's a go to meeting or not go to meeting, it's a Zoom meeting. Look at me dating myself. It's a Zoom meeting. You can be showing your faces. Everyone's collaborating, but Jennifer is going to be presenting on that one. So stoked to hear her present on that. You see the date on there. I believe there'll be a recording too. But either way, join it. Join the user group. There's a Slack community. Yeah, good call. How do I join the Slack group? The Slack group, when you uh, join the user group, you get instructions to join the Slack group. We let you right in. So great question. And, and you definitely want to check out this one because uh, Jennifer is smart. All right, go time. Hey, any questions for me? Um, you know, Hit me up, Casey at uh, Casey Josh on Twitter or Casey at CheshireImpact.com. Um, if you haven't already gotten your CSI grade, or sorry, grading and scoring in my mind, CSI, the assessment for how well you're doing with Pardot, um, and not we're sharing this with anyone, this is for you to know how well you're doing. If you wanna do that, just um, type in CSI into the chat um, or send me an email, Casey at CheshireImpact.com. And what we can do is we schedule a time to go through the assessment questions with you just to give you a sense of where you're at. We'll give you recommendations of where you can take it. You don't have to buy anything. It's just so you understand where you're at, where you need to go. Um, so you have that. We have some workshops. Sign up for those things. And then also Hardcore Marketing Show is my podcast. 
hardcoremarketing.com. If you haven't listened to that, I love your feedback. Check it out. I interview people way smarter than me on amazing topics. So with that, we have gotten through there. Okay, I see some CSIs in the chat. So yeah, see some people, this is interesting. Some people make you have fill out a form, not us. No, you don't need to fill out a form. If you just want to get your assessment for Pardot, all you got to do is type in CSI in the chat and magically you're followed up, right? Pretty neat. Try that in your own webinars sometime. That way you don't have to necessarily make people have a gate. And then the question should be, are you scoring people differently when they type that? That's a good question. All right. With that, we are done. So we were going to end the recording by recording people and we'll get to your questions. All right. Does anyone have any questions that we did not address? Oh, yeah. Thank you, too. Oh, and Christina, would you mind uh, killing the recording for me? Por favor. <laughs>